Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 333, the news edition. That's not, it's the primates edition. That's a better name for it. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today's October 10th, 2017. Okay, George, how you doing? Welcome back to the program. I'm doing great, Kevin. Wonderful things happening in the life, the okay. church. Uh, I got a couple of emails. Uh, your part of Florida has recovered, correct? Or is re- still recovering? Uh, from the hurricanes? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, we're just fine. Okay, good. All right. Oh, uh, boy, on to the news. For those of you who have been in a box, locked up in your home, haven't been on the Internet in a couple of weeks, there was a primates meeting in Canterbury, England, headed by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. And George and I get to talk about it um, because it involves a lot of things that we've talked about over the last month, uh, specifically some of the weaknesses we've seen in GAFCON, some of the, oh, I don't want to say corruption. Okay, corruption in the uh, Church of England uh, and in the Anglican Communion for that matter. Um, and boy, the absolute dissolution on any structure or um, what we call the instruments of uh, unity, that's done. That's over, George. So It is. It's, it's an exciting time because we're in a process of change. Mm-hmm. The primates meeting was a lose-lose proposition for all involved. And what is exciting is that it, it wasn't lose in the sense the way Dublin was, where it was just a total waste of time and people were just marking their calendars for the next meeting and the next fight and so on. This time around, I think there's a there's a I think there's a consensus arising among those portions of the thinking Anglican world that the final paragraph of the Windsor Report may be right, that we just need to start thinking about how we're gonna walk apart. Because none of the instruments of unity have any moral credibility. So let's just set up for those people who were locked in their houses, what happened. The primates met. It was all dark and news for a little while. Uh, There are some pictures about them walking around the uh, Canterbury Cathedral with candles and walking around and praying. Um, No real press pictures. But the press meeting the first day uh, showed Archbishop Welby and a couple primates And they go, how's it going? What's going on in there? I assure you, all is well. This is not like previous primates meetings. What was that all about, George? Well, Archbishop Welby was correct on one level. The level of uh, debate and dialogue has diminished drastically. Now, at that press conference, they were asked, well, is this because... uh, the Nigerians and the Ugandans and the Rwandans are here. And Josiah Odaiwu for own laughed. And then uh, Justin Welby went, oh, no, 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 we're so sad they're not here. But the uh, the implication was quite clear from Odaiwu for own. The, the hardliner's absence made things go more smoothly. Greg Venables said this was a much more relaxed meeting. And it's not, I want people to understand, it's not because they have our one mind and the church is going in one direction but because these fellows have realized it just doesn't matter. It's not uh, worth getting themselves exercised and worked up and putting and investing a great deal of their energy and emotional and personal capital in what takes place at the primates meeting because what happens doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I want, this is where I want to go with this. They're sitting down at these tables and I I care by what you're saying over there, uh, GAFCON, but you don't have the numbers, we don't really have to do anything about it. And that was kind of the difference here is um, people were allowed to say what they wanted, but there was no tension in the room that there was going to be accountability in this church. Yes, the Archbishop of Canterbury started off by saying we have no way to enforce accountability. Here are all, yes, I promised to do all this stuff last time around, but here are the legal reasons why I couldn't do anything. And then let's do the same thing to the Scots, which is uh, give them a uh, verbal dressing down, but then do nothing of any consequence. So, so for the activists on either side, basically just held fire because 
why get yourself worked up when nothing is going to come from this? So, and with the dominance of new members who have no history, uh, they're clueless as to what's going on. I didn't really understand why he couldn't do what he and Rowan Williams promised they would do. Um, so going back the last seven primates meetings, it's, they really couldn't do anything, but they agreed they would try to do something. Well, that is, let's just talk about Justin Welby. Justin okay. Welby, Rowan Williams never promised as clearly and as succinctly. He Rowan couldn't Williams, if he tried. <laughs> Rowan Williams promised to talk. Yes. <laughs> to, or to bring these views to the attention. Justin Welby, flat out, here's what I'm going to do. Here are the consequences. And then it didn't matter. Mm hmm George Kerr, let's contrast, what's the answer, Kevin? It's the character of the Archbishop of Canterbury. At the Lambeth Conference in 1998, where George Kerry presided, George Kerry intervened for, as he was president of the debate on human sexuality, and he heard both sides, and then George Kerry said, and this is what I think, and this is what we're going to do. And I, and the meeting just followed the leader, George Kerry, said, this is what we're going to do. This is the uh, un, uh, unambiguous tradition of the church. Okay, folks, you can express your disappointment with it, but this is where we are, and this is what we're going to do. Justin Welby has that, his office has that same degree of moral authority. Just uh, Rowan Williams would exercise that moral authority from time to time in oblique ways. But Justin Williams is uh, Justin Welby. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Justin Williams. Justin Welby is all bluster. And the primates have sort of figured this out. And so at this point, you, we have the Kenyan Archbishop, who is in a very weak internal position within the Anglican Church of Kenya. He's a member of the Maasai tribe. He's on the political outs with uh, both the opposition and the government. He has had some embarrassments internally. And he needs the PR victory of a meeting where all Anglicans are happy. He doesn't have the strength of his position, and I don't know his character, to basically come out swinging. At the Cairo meeting, uh, before the primates meeting, we're told that Jackson Ole Sabbath was right there. He believed. He was involved. He was going to say this, do this. And yet... He was one of the three members of the committee that drafted the final communique. Hold on. Where did we get that information? Well, I asked. I, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't have that information. Because that was one of the contentions when I uh, did an interview with Archbishop Venables. He says, I don't know who was on this committee. This is a completely different way than we've written a communique in the past. Before, there was a, a design committee. I've been on it before. I've led it before. I don't know what's going on. Uh, obviously, the... Lambeth has something to answer for. Yes, Lambeth was playing the uh, uh, diversity game. We want a yellow primate, a black primate, sure. and a uh, brown primate, or a white primate. White primate, yeah. So we have Paul Kwong of Hong Kong, who, by the way, is a uh, member of a Chinese Communist Party government committee and is anti-democracy in Hong Kong, and he's a real character. Uh, he's a company man. And he belongs to two companies, yes, the is. Anglican Communion and the Communist Party of the People's Republic of China. Uh, we have Philip Frere, the primate of Australia. Mm -hmm. And you remember all the back and forth where Frere said to the uh, Archbishop of Sydney and Tasmania and Northwest Australia, don't get involved yep. in the act of consecration at Wheaton. And so if you wonder where does this border crossing language come from, probably comes from Philip Frere, because these are the arguments that he made. And the third person was Jackson Ole Sabbat. So you've got three people, three races. You've got three positions. You have uh, center left, center, center right. And then you have the staff write this thing with these three guys. The, the committee began working on Wednesday after Greg Venables left. As Greg pointed out, prior practice for every primates meeting of which I'm aware was that every day, the first thing was set up a committee to write, and every day the work in process would be shared with the primates. It didn't happen this time. We had uh, representative sampling. 
I asked for a copy of the final communique with the people's signatures on it. No can do. What? That doesn't so, seem practical because, well, whatever. No. I asked, you know, and I asked all these questions, and the only answers I got were when the committee was started, who was on it, and I asked specifically, was a senior Canadian churchman who was in Canterbury, was he part of the committee? And I was told, absolutely not. But all the other questions I asked about the who, what, when, where, why, and how were all ignored. So essentially, Greg Venable's point that this is a this was a put-up job by a committee of sort of corporatist archbishops, it was correct. Did it represent the views of everybody? No. Can Greg Venables see himself in this communique? No. Uh, three people can. Paul Kwong, Philip Freer, and Jackson Oli Sappet. Now, when I talked to Archbishop Venables, he made it clear that GAFCON was not at the primates meeting. That each person was, if you were a GAFCON primate, you were primarily representing your own province. And he didn't, he didn't want to convey that GAFCON was there and lost. He wanted to convey that even though they had a pre-meeting in Cairo um, where the Global South, you know, really gave their opinion that, you know, GAFCON is kind of toxic, uh, you know, hold on, somebody's trying to call me. That's my, my son. I'm just going to tell him I can't talk right now. Hold on. Boom. You think that'll matter? No, he'll call again in a minute. Um, <laughs> that's the way kids are. Uh, he said, you know, this is not a loss for GAFCON because we weren't really there. What are your thoughts on that, George? Uh, yes and no. That's why I'm an Episcopalian, Kevin. I can say that with a straight face. <laughs> yes, right. It is not a loss for the GAFCON movement. Uh -huh. It's a movement for the reform and renewal of the Anglican way. Because, uh, but it is a, a loss for the structures of GAFCON. One of the arguments I have been putting forward, you and I have been discussing, is the fatal flaw of having primatially driven GAFCON entity. We are an Episcopal church, smally, meaning a bishops run church. And Lambeth has always been the most effective vehicle because the bishops are there and the bishops talk. And that is, if you will, the basic. Uh, ecclesial unit of the church. The province really isn't. In other words, just look at the differences between uh, the Archbishop of Australia, who in essence is first among equals, who can't tell the Archbishop of Sydney Boo, and the Archbishop of Hong Kong, who has three other bishops in a province, and he can tell them to do whatever he wants them to do. So the GAFCON, the way GAFCON has been operating, of a primatially driven con uh, entity or each time a primate change. We had uh, West Africa flip. We had uh, Central Africa flip. Uh, we've had um, provinces go back and forth. We've had Tanzania noticeably flip and flip back. Yeah. Also dealing with one man with his local political issues and agendas. So this, essentially GAFCON has to reinvent itself. GAFCON isn't working as a structure. Because the Jerusalem document, the ideals set forth are working, but how they're bringing them to the, how they're taking them to the court, how they're playing the game, it's not working. No, but the, neither is the Welbyism. No, I mean, nobody's work. <laughs> as I've said many times, Gafcon is the best way forward. They are going through some growing pains, George, as we've noted. Um, where's all this going? All this is going for what could really happen down the road with the next Lambeth. Um, you and I have discussed, you know, what it means to show up at Lambeth, uh, how powerful Lambeth is, because um, let's be honest, uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, Instrument of Unity, no. ACC, Instrument of Disunity, yes. Uh, let's go with a, a primates meeting, no longer, a, Instrument of Unity. All that may be left is Lambeth. And I think with We've some pre-planning, it could be a instrument of GAFCON. Well we've, well, we've seen now very clearly that the boycott strategy works has, has no credibility. Um, it does not work. It cannot work. It will not work. 
it's like the American embargo on Cuba. It's going on 60 to 50 years now, and it still hasn't worked. Boycotting Lambeth by the score Gavcom provinces may be a short-term moral victory, but it's a short-sighted moral victory because it doesn't change the game. If Gafcon goes and forth, if Gafcon and its bishops negotiate with the Lambeth Conference organize right now, the Lambeth Conference organizing committee is led by the primate of South Africa, Tabo Makova. And it, he was the head of it in 2008. And they put together, they had a all liberal uh, Americans and so on and so forth, Canadian team putting together the agenda, how it would work, how would we do this and that. And Lambeth 2008 was the fiasco that it was. It was bad. Uh, just just look at how the press operations. Mm. Instead of having press people running it, they had the primate of Canada's secretary, uh, principal secretary, an archdeacon, be one of the major press officers. This guy was no real press person. He was a player in the fight itself. Gafcon needs to. Gafcon should negotiate, saying these are the conditions we want. The ACNA there. Give them observer status. Yeah, if you really, will. that's fine. I mean, the, yeah. give them the same status that you give to, uh, oh, the Maratoma Anglican, you know, Maratoma <laughs> Indian Church who come. You know, find find a way, but get them in the room because their voices need to be heard. Mm -hmm. And then the GAFCON has to say, look, we cannot allow you to monopolize the staffing of this meeting communications because in 98 and 08 I saw funny business take place missing resolutions things that are recast um, the whole Delphi technique to sort of drown out majority opinions to make sure that yes means no and no means yes in Daba Daba mm -hmm. um, if GAFCON stays away then GAFCON is a waste of time Oh, I'll be perfectly fine. Well, this is the fight they need to fight. I mean, if, if you want to um, have an influence in the Anglican communion that needs you so bad, uh, not just your numbers, not just your money and prayers, but to fight for the, the doctrine and sanity of the church, which is our witness to the world, uh, I can't do anything but recommend you be there in full force. Now, when we say that, not just the primates, all of your bishops, I mean... If I'm doing the math correct, if Nigeria brought all their, their bishops, well, you got a majority. This is not our idea, Kevin. This idea goes back to the conversation that you and I had with Henry Arambi back in Alexandria. Mm -hmm. And that conversation was that we need a church council where we sit there and we thrash this out. And then we all sign on the dotted line. Um, this is where Henry Arambe's point was have Gene Rob this is at that time yeah. have Gene Robinson there yeah. have Jack Eicher there have them all there the act everybody involved so that we can thrash these out and hear these things and then the church can adopt as a church by its bishops acting because primates have various powers some of the metropolitans some of them aren't and the, and the provinces are sort of artificial entities, have the bishops, who are the masters of their domain, sign off and agree. And then we will be moving forward. What direction that is, I don't know. But right now, we don't have compromise. We don't have resolution. We have avoidance. Yeah. And that well, avoidance has, is... Well... When Justin Welby's now, Justin Welby's a joke. He's a joke in the British press. He's, uh, I mean, I've heard British bishops tell me that the man just. Oh, Listen, that, that GQ thing, that was just special. I, I think he did that interview just for you and me because I, I had a smile on my face for at least 72 hours. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, we. The, the communion can survive if the best rise to the top. But the way the system is set up right now, the mediocre float on the top. The staffers float on the top. Well, let's close this out. But in my mind, what GAFCON is doing is a 
uh, subculture of the Benedict option. You know, we'll just go back to our place, our country, our provinces, and we're not going to let anything bother us. Well, I'm not thinking that's going to work too well. I think this is the failure of the Benedict option. Um, you can't just hide. Uh, you are called by Christ to defend him, the honor, the gospel, um, and when you're called, especially when you're called on to defend him. What is actually, actually, it's actually a bit critical because hmm. people accuse me remaining in the Episcopal Church of practicing the Benedict option. My church is going great. We grow, we've grown 10% a year for the past four years. Uh, the size of the Central Florida is a happy, uh, wealthy. We have eight, my parish has eight months operating cash on hand. Um, and we have no endowments. When's the last We're time you gave to AMC TV? Uh, We're what? doing, what I'm, what I'm trying to say, Kevin, is, is that people who accuse me, well, why don't you do the right decision and leave and all this and that, Gathcon is doing the same thing as I am. They're making a bunch of noises, then going home to their safe little castle. And from what I understand with the interview I had with uh, Archbishop Venables, that's not the way he wants to do it. So I think uh, we'll, I, we're probably going to see something different from Gafcon. I pray we do. Um, they are the way forward. Um, I need to go pick up my son, George, so i got to cut this short. Um, I, I'm, you, said, you said you needed to pick up your son, George. No. Comma. There was a comma. Yeah, comma. comma. Yeah, like I'm a grammar person. <clears throat> I'm a grammar have, person like I'm a lawyer. <laughs> I'm a grammar Nazi. <laughs> You're a Nazi. George, I need to go pick up my son, Benjamin, who stayed after school for, oh, I don't know what club he's in. Ah, kids nowadays. He's going to text me in a second again. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. You've been watching episode 333 of Anglican Unscripted.